Hi. I uh, want to warn you that I'm not quite sure how to do this video because what I have um, that I'm going to show you is a very long paper and it's boring. There's not any um, flashy pictures or anything that I can show you. But I do have the links for what I'm showing you um, that are below and you can go and read it yourself and look up stuff yourself which is what I'd recommend because this is long and boring but I'm also going to cut I'm also going to only put a few bits and pieces in and because it's so long and my computer is not um, the best and I'm not the best technological person um, I'm just going to give you little bits and pieces here but what I want to show you is this patent that is um, for communication between radio terminals on an extraterrestrial body using space, a space-based component and, and an auxiliary component located on the extraterrestrial body. Now this is uh, Google Patents and the patent number is up here in the URL along with being over here and you can download, you can go to the site and download the PDF for it. And then uh, the inventors I've got listed in my link. Oops. Oh. Let's go back up here. They're listed over here. Um, can I move this so you can see it? They're all right there. Okay. Um, and this is a patent under um, the PCT, which is uh, let me sh let me show you what that means exactly. The PCT is the International Patent System so that um, this patent will be covered in countries. Um, the patent protection internationally for their inter inventions helps patent offices with their patent granting decisions and facilitates public access to a wealth of technological information relating to those inventions. So I also have the link for that that will be below so you can look at it. So let me just show you um, the top of the page. Um, let's see which one is it. This one. This is the abstract and an abstract normally is a summary of what something is. Um, so it's a shortened version and this is huge. I mean really this is it's really really long. The underlying invention is solar sonic deep space multi-dimensional coded universal communications via ionosphere, armed signals and quantum a algorithm, renaissance of hydrooxyl molecules, cosmic radio waves. The said invention is a solar sonic universal multi-dimensional radio astronomical control tower resonator for the systematic multi-communications and manipulation of all resonating matters and antimatters alike. The solar sonic multidimensional interstellar radio signal communications resonator is a novel technology precisely pertaining to deep space multidimensional radio signal communications which is an art reflected within the formal technology stated title. The present in invention provides a system for communications on an extraterrestrial body may include a space-based component and an auxiliary extraterrestrial component on the extraterrestrial body. The space-based component may be configured to provide wireless communications with plurality I'm sorry about that. <laughs> I live with other people. I had, actually, when I stopped it, I noticed that I think I believe this is the application number right here for the um, invention. Okay, now where was I? Um, the space space component may be configured to provide wireless communications with pl plurality of radio terminals located on the extraterrestrial body over a satellite frequency band wherein the space-based component includes at least one satellite o orbiting over the extraterrestrial body. 
The auxiliary extraterrestrial component may be configured to provide wireless communication with a plurality of radio terminal located on the extraterrestrial body. Okay, let's move up because as you can see this is very um, complicated and extremely interesting in my opinion. Here I moved down a little bit on the paragraph just to give you a little bit more of an idea. The exciter system is adapted to induce a quasi-static effervescent field within the space and to thereby enable communications using the effervescent field at frequencies within an operational frequency range determined by the characteristics of the space. I mean, we're talking about stuff that probably a lot of us don't really know. And this technology is um, pretty impressive. Okay, I'm going to move down on it. So here we're under classifications. Um, oops. Description. Communication between radio terminals, blah, 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 blah. That's like what I read. And listen to this. A world-class, multi-dimensional, high-tech patent of alien communication and manipulations technology. What do you think about that? <laughs> and the claims are over here for what it is supposed to do. Um, now, my... Let's, I'm not sure if I can move this page. The principal claims of the invention, the underscore jointly present a world-class high-tech patent of alien communications and manipulation technology. It is by all means a legendary work of precision, targeting beyond the description of words. Professor, um, I can't tell if that says doctor or not, Amar has quite literally communicated with extraterrestrial intelligence and has dominated the ex the electromagnetic spectrum six different times with telepathically resonating capsulated energy streaming or TRCES which is the universal ang alien language of the entire universe now this is hot stuff here okay let's move it up here a little it is a form of consensually agreeable alphabet of the universe, both interstellar and intergalactic radio signal waves, which is armed with galactically agreeable language and energetic streaming patterns. The radio signals are energetically armed in order to vibrate, stimulate, dominate, override, spread, publicize, impede, emit, intercept, receive, transfer, Mediate, convey, control, transform, carico wave, propagate, transmit, converse, release, and interpret all intergalactic and interstellar telepathy, telepathically resonating, capsulated energy streaming, universally known as TRES. The underlying Invention is solar sonic deep space multidimensional coded universal communications via ionosphere armed signals and quantum algorithm resonance of hydroxy one molecules cosmic radio waves. This is uh, really intense. So um, let me move down a little more and show you some more stuff that's on this paper. But I really encourage you because there's no way I'm going to get this into a video that is going to keep you interested in watching. Okay, I'm way down on the page. Um, see this little thing right here? What I read to you earlier was way up here. So it doesn't have a page number on it, but um, now right above what I'm reading here, are all of the aliens that they know about or the uh, extraterrestrials that they know about. Um, so this says um,
manipulation and monopolization of interplanetary entities by utilizing solar system communications capabilities of alerts on Earth with thoughts of invading the planet Earth. Oh, I'm sorry. That's, uh, they're talking about this alien. This is number 59. I might as well go up. So there's 59 different entities that are mentioned in this paper. Let's see if I can see all these different names. Um, <laughs> so there's all these names, and a lot of them have... Uh, we'll tell you a little bit about them. Um, the Council of Five. The Council of Five is composed of the following races, and that's these five right here. And they, um, what looks like, is the leaders of a lot of what is communications and decisions universally. Um, let's see all these different. Different names. Let's let's say um, I'm not, probably not pronouncing it right. Aniana. This race is what we humans call Martians. They come from the constellation Gemini. For thousands of years, they've had bases on Mars, where they mined a sort of gold-like mineral. The first recorded visit on Earth was in 1235 BC in Japan. According to the book, I'm not sure what book they're talking about here. They were last seen on Earth in Madagascar in 2003. Um, they have the Anunnaki mentioned on here, and they talk about amphibians similar to the Saurians or reptilians, yet being hominid creatures with reptilian as well as amphibians-like features and are semi-aquatic in nature, may have once lived on land, yet become more aquatic over the centuries. They've been encountered near swampy regions, rivers, etc., where they have been known to attack people without being provoked. It is interesting that some types of greys and reptoids are believed to be semi-aquatic, having webbed fingers and toes. Okay, so I'm going to go back down. I'm sorry, it's going to be blurry for a minute here. Down to 59. Um... With regards to interplanetary foreign entities, their activities and the impact of non-human entities on planet Earth, precisely the search for extraterrestrial intelligence, SETI, solar sonic technologies proudly present with great pride the foreign entities communication technology as the only SETI discovery to date. This discovery is the world's most sophisticated extraterrestrial intelligence communication technology ever been announced. It is emerging to communicate with invisible light being entities that never been known to exist. We are prepared to prove that sec such technology works via ground-based and orbital solar triggers and converging mediums. And then uh, we are also prepared to prove that those interplanetary foreign entities have devastated and will continue to deteriorate Earth since they are made of invisible cosmic elements, enabling them to maneuver within the solar system undetected. Now, I don't know if that's true, okay? I'm just saying what they're saying on here, and I don't know who they're working for or who they're working with. Um, so this could be put out by aliens themselves that are working for working with whoever's making this against some of the good aliens or humans themselves so I don't know I'm just reading what is written here so they're talking here some of their fatal impacts on earth are natural disasters shifting in gravitational and electromagnetic fields asteroids airborne objects they're saying they're capable of the extraterrestrials are capable of this stuff. Airborne objects, cosmic radiation, microwaves, micro changes in air density, and also water molecules. Now, I know that technology is already capable of doing this stuff that humans possess. So I don't know if they got it from the aliens or what. <coughs> Excuse me. 
obstruction of all types of energies, energetic structures, and the laws of physics. Now, some of it we can't do. <laughs> Navigational interferences in air, water, and land. Interferences in aerodynamics, astrodynamics, electrodynamics, and hydrodynamics, and also causing high-altitude static discharge. Interfering on global satellite systems and all forms of global communication. Blah, blah, blah. So, let's move it down here a little. Ferocious geological, geophysical, and atmospheric shifting, resettling of nuclear equations and atomic structures with extreme subatomic variations, natural deaths, cancers, neurological disorders, alien viruses, and diseases causing new strands of mutations, peril being paralyzed, loss of hearing, sight, memory eradication, viruses, and many other fatal impacts that are quite literally that quite literally cover all aspects of human life with its pertaining areas and departments that substantially affect life on Earth. This extraterrestrial message was received on one fourteen two fifteen by Dr. Mohammed M. Amar with Solar Sonic Technologies and Laboratories. The message has been interpreted as followed. So they're saying it wasn't written in English. <clears throat> they interpreted it. Our earthly scientist, especially universal coding interpreter, and intergalactic scientist, our beloved Mohammed. So that's Mohammed here. The message below was not in the English language. It was interpreted and recorded by research science scientist Dr. Muhammad. And the recording is available on request as verification of absolute substantiation and the technological abilities for actual extraterrestrial communications and the validi validity of our SETI factual technology and contact. The extraterrestrial message received on 114.215 is. Okay, I'm going to move this up a little and pause it. We agree to your contents. We fully support and participate in all your efforts to reach out with divine, within divine parameters. And in that regard, we will comply accordingly. Please transmit in an orderly fashion as time is now of the essence here and down there below on earth. We read you very clearly, our Muhammad, both telepathically and cybernetically, and we are pleased that you are now became so obvious to you on our varied platforms that serve all of our interests. Deliberately persistent evil will be met with a higher degree of evil after an overwhelming consensual approval by the Council of Five we honor your communications and we accept all pertaining contents of which we strongly believe interstellar intervention is a must. Okay, so um, they also say beware of the bearers of false gifts and broken promises, much pain but still time. Believe there is still good out there. We oppose deception and we accept all of your contents all your contents of communication. We support you with all intergalactic multi multidimensional engagements and capabilities. Be guided accordingly as time was of the essence down on our old planet Earth. Okay, so I'm going to pause it and move it up. All upcoming occurrences are simply beyond the description of words. We will be waiting for your proposed suggestions and engagement methodologies. Ultimately, we much prefer if you declare us as warning signs to our old planet Earth, whereas the lack of rational compliance by all earthly classifications will lead to interstellar intervention on all platforms, bearing in mind that a possible Earth invasion could be inevitable and imminently advancing in a very obvious manner. Be guided accordingly in conveying interstellar warning signs exactly as transmitted to us by all the inhabitants of our old earth and now conduit closing. 
So once again, I'm going to move this up a little. Um, this is just kind of explaining what I already read earlier. Re it's reiterating it. Um, so I'm going to go down a little bit farther though here. Um, they still are claiming that the extraterrestrials are um, doing bad stuff to Earth, basically. So let me show you something more. Okay, see, this is just basically what I read before. We are prepared to prove that those interplanetary foreign entities have devastated and will continue to de deteriorate Earth. Now, this reasoning doesn't make sense to me. It sounds like somebody's just really paranoid. Since they are made of invisible cosmic elements, which enabling them to maneuver within the solar system undetected with unknown thoughts toward Earth. That just sounds like they're really afraid of them. But it sounds like the um, extraterrestrials are saying that they have some warnings that they will do and they're letting them know what they're capable of. So I'm going to move it down a little and find some more stuff. I just want to let you know, when you look this up, this is way down to the bottom part of the all this information. So <laughs> if you're going to read it from the top to the bottom and want to get to this, it'll be quite a ways. Okay, so I'm going to move down. So, like, this is an example. Um, in the subatomic world, few things can be predict predicted with 100% precision. However, accurate predictions can be made about the probability of any particular outcome. One has to work with the probabilities rather than the certainties because it is impossible for an observer to describe all aspects of a par particular at once, speed and location, particle. Electromagnetic energy, such as light or heat, does not always behave like a continuous wave. Rather, it is grainy because energy can be transferred only in quantum packages. Therefore, light has a dual character. Under certain circumstances, it may display wave-like aspects, and in other circumstances, it may have characteristics of particle. Okay, so I'm going to move it up. The following phenomena will begin to occur on a very gradual scale, making marking the beginning of warning signs, fulfilling extraterrestrial cal calculations. We are both honored and accountable to an affirmation of such magnitude under the circumstances. The only viable method of validation is time. The universe stands continually open to our gaze, but cannot be understood unless one first learns to comprehend the language and interpret the characters in which it is written. It is written in the language of mathematics and its characters, rectangles, circles, and other geometric figures without which it is humanly impossible to understand a single word of it. Without these, one is wandering about in a dark labyrinth. I'm going to move up here. Consciousness is simply the awareness of being. Consciousness seeks to know itself in relationship to others, because without this knowledge there is no purpose to existence. Since this is true, we can now understand that consciousness must fragment itself in order that there are others to relate to. Consciousness is in everything. Everything that exists is conscious at some level, even a chunk of lead. Now, isn't this interesting that they're talking about all this stuff, like, it even sounds spiritual in a sense, as far as talking to the extraterrestrials. Um, okay, so uh, there's quite a bit of interesting stuff here. I'm going to move up a little more, because I'm already on 24 minutes. This actually could be like three or four videos. Consciousness exists beyond space-time, and indeed space-time is a manifestation of consciousness as it seeks to experience the minutest details of itself through these relationships. Growth occurs through expansion of knowledge and increasing awareness. When consciousness at a certain level has acquired all the knowledge possible at that level, changes must be made in order for the acquisition of knowledge to continue. These changes are not always pleasant for the manifestations of consciousness existing at that time, 
but it has been shown that the changes occur at fairly regular intervals intervals of 11,000 to 13,000 years, calculated according to the time frame we understand in human terms. Perceptive people have always had intuitive and clairvoyant knowledge of these changes because they are perhaps more open to the information already available in the universal mind about such things. Their awareness is, however, shaped and colored by the prevailing belief sy systems of their time. Their visions are received and interpreted from images and feelings that do not carry complete understanding, so most are fear-based and instill fear in those who hear or read these revelations. This need not be. Let's move up just a little bit more. Human beings are by nature egocentric, meaning that their perspective on any experience is based on its relationship to an effect on themselves. Their identity is anchored firmly in their body, so they perceive any experience of the body in direct proportion to the joy or pain it brings. And events that bring pain are feared. <clears throat> it doesn't occur to most people to understand that such events are not based on anything they personally did right or wrong. Let me move it up a little more here. The universal mind is, to a large extent, still perceived as a separate being of great power that gives rules to live by, a being who meets out, out punishment if the rules are broken. But if all experiences are simply received by the universal mind in terms of value of each experience for itself, there can be no such judgment or punishment. After all, whom would it punish but pieces of itself? Of itself. <clears throat> There is a larger perspective to be taken here. If we remove the personal beliefs about judgment and punishment from the picture, we are left with an entity consciousness, which desires to know itself through experiences with itself, and all experiences, joyful or painful, are received and accepted solely for the value they have as experiences. And the cyclical nature of the changes is for the purpose of further growth and knowledge acquisition. There is no judgment or punishment intended or involved regardless of the traditional beliefs about such events. Now, part of what I'm very impressed by is this is talking about communicating with extraterrestrial beings and they're going into this um, philosophy um, so we're back to the changes occur in cycles all the time. And then they're going to go into talking about um, changes that will be happening. Um, okay, so our bodies completely renew themselves every seven years if all systems are working properly. There are cycles of infancy, childhood, adolescence, adulthood, midlife, and seniority. And if seniority, am I saying that right, lasts long enough, there is a return to childhood. Should we experience a second full cycle if we live 200 years? Very likely we, we would. Um, blah, 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 blah. I mean, it's not blah. It, to me, it's unbelievable. People learn more about love, sadness, wealth, poverty, and experience great changes in their values as they get older. And they're talking about history. Um, so... I'm going to go down because um, it is a simple fact that those who enter the experience of these changes with a larger perspective will be less inclined to fear them and will adapt more easily to what is required of them. They can then, in turn, assist others in the process of survival. List of intergalactic warning signs that are in progress for the old planet Earth. Now this what follows is really long also. And um, I'm going to read parts of it. I'm going to move this up. But I'm definitely not going to read it all. I'm already almost at 30 minutes here. One, the principle of divine entrapment will be the first of intergalactic warning signs precisely set to earth. Precisely sent to Earth. Now, what does that mean? I don't know. Two, the principle of divine retaliation will immediately follow as the second sign of intergalactic 
warning sign. Three, the gradual appearance of extraterrestrial entities of invisible light beings inhabiting all of the solar system. Four, raging winds of the dead emerge and overwhelmingly prevail as extraterrestrial beings via frequencies. Five, interplanetary shifting and its effects on global communications, aerospace, defense, navigation, migration, or human entities communicating with humans via induced and coded frequencies on varied platforms. Seven raging senses of the dead emerge and immensely prevail over humans via extraterrestrial mass induction. Eight. Deterioration of hearing and seeing abilities of all humans via extraterrestrial and multidimensional induction. Nine, gradual migration of interplanetary extraterrestrial frequencies disrupting life on Earth, Earth on a large scale. Ten, coded extraterrestrial messages embedded into humans via alien viruses for domination and replication. That sounds really freaky, and there's a whole bunch of it here. And then I'm going to go down to some other part that I want to show you before I um, before I cut this off. L look at this: 16 interplanetary frequency shifting, gradually leading to self-combustion of elements and reversal of all directed energies, including missiles, bombs, IED, and nuclear weapons. Air molecules will significantly reformulate on a molecular level, whereas the induced migration of any form of directed energy will lose its velocity and intended precision. That actually sounds kind of cool. Okay, let me move down. Some of this is quite horrifying, actually. Um, they're talking about these two elements will feed toxins and pathogens back and forth in large portions. The air and water will have a foul stench and will be fatally toxic. The natural disasters related to both will inevitably unleash deadly organisms and toxins. Infectionous organisms will abound due to the destruction of what will be caused from water as it turns up in regions of land that have been heavy, heavily populated. Hazardous materials that have been stored above or below ground will have a massive impact on every environment as vile chemicals and heavy metals become unleashed from containment. The water and air that sustains us will suffer. The amount of volcanic activity and debris released from them can suffocate our upper atmosphere. Whole forests will light up like matchsticks and oil fields will burn uncontrollably, contributing to large amounts of particles and toxins into the atmosphere and diminishing of our light. There's a good part at the end here. Okay, so I don't know if I lost you already, but if I haven't lost you um, and you're getting tired of listening to this video, I put myself over here on the side a little. <laughs> um, anyway, um, the link for this where you can go look at it yourself is below. And I, when I read it first, I had to take breaks because it's pretty intense stuff. Um, Changes in the Earth's population. There will be a change in the dynamics of this planet with certain aspects of matter that are dense and have particular wavelengths and harmonics will be unable to keep up with the physical and energetic shifts that take place. Essentially, any living organism and every source of inanimate matter that is not evolving with respect to the agenda of consciousness manifesting at this time which um, they're talking about the consciousness of everything. So if you're not evolving with respect to the agenda, then you will dematerialize back into organic energy and matter. <laughs> now they're not talking about your spirit because they do talk about consciousness being outside of your body, but the body itself. Lesser light manifestations will move through and vibrate into a different continuum as they vanish. 
Electromagnetic forces exist will affect the rhythms of life and the appearance and extinction of species within the Earth's magnetic field. Drastic geophysical changes will bring about a large number of deaths. Many densely populated cities are located around the world in areas that will be hardest hit by the atmospheric and geological changes. Now, it ha it, that sounds a lot like what seems to be the conversation around climate change. In addition, in spite of major successes against infectious diseases in the 20th century, the new infectious diseases have emerged and old ones reemerged in recent decades in different parts of the world. So let's um, move this up a little. With the increase in diseases, both known and unknown, births will de decrease as fertility is altered and the number of deaths will increase dramatically, causing a reversal in population. The world's level of contamination are responsible for the faster pace of pathogenic mutations. The world can expect to see a massive change in global con population within a very short time. This um, sounds like we could possibly even change it around if we did something about it now. So then they're talking about changes in the five senses. And let me move it up. Geophysical and atmospheric changes. So they're explaining what will happen. Um, the following areas will experience significant geological restructuring. This is in North America. East Coast, Gulf Coast, all the way up to the Mississippi through Canada. The entire West Coast and South along the Ring of Fire to South America and Antarctica. The tectonic plates that divide this planet will each experience massive movements so great that every landmass will be redefined. And it goes on and on. And this was really surprising to me, and I don't know how anybody could live through this. The wind will move into speeds up to 900 to 1,000 miles per hour. Uh, you need like a shelter in the ground. <coughs> Excuse me, I'm sorry. So they're talking about waters changing, gravitational and geological changes. I'm sorry, I'm just moving through this fast because um, how plants will change. Minerals molecularly aligned with the Earth's magnetic core may suddenly disassemble themselves into so much sand or change molecular structure entirely and become another type of element. Um, animal affecting animals and plants. Um, the appearance of a memory virus caused by changes in gravity and the Earth's electromagnetic lattices. Our chemistry and physio physiology will be redefined. Every cell will be challenged as gravity plays an integral part in how our bodies function. The true memory virus will s we will see is the one caused by the decrease in gravity. Our DNA will be exposed to new patterns of energy that will affect our communication processes from within. The body and the mind will suffer communication breakdowns as our cellular structures are subjected to unrelented changes in resonance. First, cells will lose the ability to process and communicate information properly. Second, biological weapons will have a serious impact epidemic in proportion. Biological weapons are created. They're not natural. Um, and here's an example. This is an artificially designed biological mimicking substance that will be produced by man and supported in its development by governments and drug companies. For many, this will be a microscopic killing machine that uses viruses and neurotoxins to affect the capacity to retain, recall, and process information. I'm going to move it up and look at this. One such neurotoxin is already available to the public and sold in stores. It's called Nutrisweet. NutraSweet, and the chemical is aspartame. 
The chemical becomes a neurotoxin at 86 degrees Fahrenheit, which is 12 degrees below the normal body temperature. The chemical contains 10% formalin and formaldehyde. Many of you recognize the name formaldehyde and know it as an embalming fluid. What do you think is happening to your brain? The virus acts by binding specifically to receptors of targeted organisms, cultivating an organism and extracting the toxic materials from it, or its spent medium produce a biological chemical weapon. As the technology evolves to artificially create such substances, they will be far more damaging and nearly impossible to identify, especially by current means. So we're going to keep going. Mental and emotional changes. Talk about uh, we can become violent or sad. Suicide rates will rise to dr dramatic levels as people see no other way out of torment and terror. 